Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's talk about the third law of Kepler. This is the law that enabled Kepler and astronomers after him to determine the distance to the various planets in our solar system, at least the ones that they were aware of. And that was an incredible discovery. He discovered the relationship between the period of the orbital motion to the average distance between the Sun and the planet, the semi-major axis. So if we keep in mind that the area of the circle is pi r squared, which most people know, and then the area of an ellipse is simply pi times a times b. And of course, you can see that if a equals b, end up with pi r squared, the circle again. You can see why that would be the case. Then let's use that concept to try to figure out how Kepler determined that p squared was proportional to a cubed. So first of all, we go back to the concept that the amount of area swept out per unit time is going to be a constant. And so that means that if we take the entire area of an ellipse, pi times a times b, and divide it by period, that ratio must be equal to the ratio of this, the amount of area per unit time being swept out, and we know that that must be a constant. So then when we move over here, we've seen this before, that if the amount of area swept out is equal to half the area of the base times the height, the area of the base would be the delta s along the base of the triangle formed by that motion, times r, which is the distance to from the sun to the planet, and then of course delta s is r times delta theta. Then if we turn that into a differential, we can see that dA equals one half, r squared times d theta, and then if we divide both sides by dt, we see that dA dt is equal to one half r squared d theta dt. And of course d theta dt can be written as omega. So now we have an expression that we can plug in over here. But before we do that, we want to make some other comparisons. We remember that omega was equal to L times u squared over m. Remember that u was 1 over r. So this can be written as L divided by m r squared. And so then dA can be written as 1 half r squared. And instead of omega, we can write L over m r squared. The r squares cancel out, so we have 1 half L over m, which is, of course, a constant. Makes sense because L is a constant and the mass of the planet is a constant. And then if we realize that L squared is also equal to gm times little m squared b squared over a, which we derived in an earlier video, then we can come over here and we can write that dA dt, which is 1 half L over m, is equal to pi ab over p, and L can then be written as the square root of gm times m times b divided by the square root of a. If we take the square root of both sides, you can see that that would equal this portion right here. So this right here is equal to the L. We still have 2 pi m times a b in the numerator. All right, simplifying that, notice that the m's cancel out, the b's cancel out, so we end up with the period equals 2 pi times a to the 3 halves divided by gm to the 1 half power, g being the universal uh, gravitational constant, m being the mass of the sun. Then if we square both sides, we end up with p squared equals 4 pi squared over gm times a cubed, or if we put this in brackets here, you can see that p squared is proportional to a cubed and realizing that this here is a constant, 4 pi squared divided by g divided by the mass of the sun. So this means that if we knew the period of any planet and we can calculate the mass of the sun, which can be determined by using the universal equation of gravity, from that we can find the distance to the planets. Now, p would be in seconds, a would be in meters, and so you can see that this works out because G and M, well, M would be the mass of the sun, which is a huge number, so that's how they equate one another. Or we could say that P squared is equal to A cubed if P is in years. Let me write that better here. If the period is expressed in years and the um, semi-major axis is expressed in astronomical units, then you could set P squared equal to A cubed. And then again, for any planet, if you know the period, you will know the distance in astronomical units, or if you know the period in seconds, you can find the distance in meters if you know the mass of the sun and the universal gravitational constant g. That, of course, took a little while before they could get a reasonably accurate number for this, but again, you can see the relationship, and sure enough, Kepler was right that p cubed was proportional to, uh, p squared was proportional to a cubed, making up the third law of Kepler. Amazing, amazing accomplishment, but that's what he discovered, and this is how it's done.
Uh, let's see if I have any more prepared. 